It is recording. All right. I mean, I think now is probably a good time to begin. Great. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you also to Maxine and Robin at Like for putting this together. Really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully what this course is going to do is offer you guys something to keep your mind working creatively on photography. Um, this specific session is intended to last for 24 hours from, from now. I'll be giving you an assignment and then tomorrow there'll be a review phase for those of you who want to be joining with that. Um, obviously this is quite a short amount of time to be working on something, so I think it's nice if we take this on as a longer term idea, really give it the time it needs to, to breathe. So don't feel constrained by that 24 hour restriction, take as long as you need. Um, the idea for this session is to give a very simple assignment, to talk through a few ideas around the concept and kickstart some creativity in you guys. Um, we're going to be deconstructing some of the conceptual ideas around the concept, which is through my window. And we're going to then reconstruct those towards the end into something original for ourselves to create. Uh, the point of this assignment isn't to produce some amazing piece of work uh, for the sake of producing work, but instead for you guys to have a space to experiment, try something new, uh, don't go for what's tried and tested. If you already think you can make a good image out of the concept, don't go for that. Go for something new. Try things that we discuss that you haven't tried before, and it should be stress-free. Um, you know, there's no pressure to compete. It's just about you being as creative as possible. Um, I'm going to try and cover as many ideas as possible in the presentation. You don't have to try and incorporate everything I said. If there's just one thing, one idea that you pick up on to play with, uh, go with that, or if you want to try and combine a few ideas, that works too. Or you can ignore everything I say, try and try and do your own thing. Um, but try and produce some copies, uh, you know, some variations on the things I talk about, just so that you've covered them, uh, you know, for yourself. Okay. So, with most assignments, what I normally say is to whatever your first few ideas are, throw those out. Go for what you haven't thought of instantly. You know. That way you've had to think about it, you've discarded the obvious stuff. That's what makes sense. So the brief today is called Through My Window. Uh, how this worked is um, they, they came up with a list of concepts of things we could try in our own homes. And the window one stood out to me because it's, it's quite a, it's a very basic, simple idea. But I think that that simplicity means you can really make it complicated yourself. You know, you can add layers of meaning and intent uh, to what's normally quite a simple, you know, everyday piece of structure. Um, the most basic interpretation of this brief would be just a photograph of a window or a photograph through a window. Uh, I think personally a more interesting way of doing this is, is to kind of study what a window represents. You know, what does a window offer in terms of, you know, the ideas we associate with it. Just photographing what's seeable through a window gets very old very quickly and that's not a, a fun way to create because you, you end up creating one photo and that's basically it. Uh, the photo I've used on this slide I ignore Sorry. that that's not for me cool yeah. <laughs> great uh, the photo on this slide is the is the the literal view from my bedroom window I made this a few months ago it was maybe four or five a.m uh, it's ectochrome slide film and it's it's the basic looking out the window framing the building opposite and metering for the light However, it's not just a snapshot. It's not the everyday looking out my window. You need to have the right combination of a certain time of year, certain time of day, certain weather. You need to have patience for all the elements in terms of the, the plane, the birds to line up. Everything you're factoring in, it's not an everyday view. It took me a lot of time to come up with one photo from my bedroom window that I was happy with. And I've shot this scene a lot of times. So that's not really what we're going to be going for today. We want to be going for how do you think about what you have to work with almost every day. So to start with, we can think about which windows we have access to in our houses. The, the space you're in, you know, whatever's available to you, if you were thinking about this concept and one window jumped to your head and you want to go for that window, think about a different window. You know, you've already thought about that one. That's the obvious choice. Don't go for that. Um, choose something that will actually take some time and consideration to make something unique. Um, I, I did a bit of a brainstorm for this. I've got clear glass panes in my room. That offers me one thing. I've got frosted window uh, in the kitchen. Um, if you've got colored glass, some kind of mosaic on the window, you can use that as a creative filter. You can go for something a bit more abstract. For example, my oven, my washing machine, my microwave, they all have windows. And photographing from inside that would be a unique perspective. Obviously switch off those appliances. That would be silly to 
just leave the camera on and something that's switched on, don't do that. But what I'm saying is to not limit yourself to the most basic understanding of your basic window. Try and think about what you have that you can be using that's fresh. Okay. Then we can deconstruct, you know, what the basic elements of Windows tend to be, which is pretty obvious, but without deconstructing that concept, we won't be able to construct something new out of those elements. Uh, more often than not, a window tends to be the absence of something. It's, you know, it's a transparent hole. It's nothing. But then you've got the frame around it. You've got maybe the curtains around that. Maybe you've got wooden slats and fabric. You'll, you'll have something in front of the window. You know, maybe there's flowers or a subject like a person. You can really layer those aspects and build a scene outwards from the window as a central point. And then we've got the, the actual view on the other side of the window, which is more layers. You've got, you know, people passing by, you've got the street, the sky, trees, whatever there is outside. And then you can work your way inwards and layer through what the pieces of the window are. Layering is, is uh, probably one of my favorite techniques to, to build a scene. Um, the first thing to do is about positioning yourself. So how far are you from the window you're working with? Are you gonna be as close as possible to the windows nothing? Uh, are you gonna be further away? Obviously the further away you are, the more layers you tend to have. You can incorporate more into the scene. The window also becomes smaller because of perspective. So you can really work on creating a bit of an atmosphere by distancing yourself. Um, so for example, you can use the window as the background as the furthest element and then have something as the mid ground, something in the room as the foreground. Uh, or you can use the scene outside as the background, window as the mid ground and then something in the foreground on the inside of the room, if that makes sense. And I've, I've used examples here that should show off some you know, ways you can use and incorporate different elements of layering into the scene. Um, then there's also the idea of the, the nature of using glass. So glass is very reflective. So you can use that to reflect something that's inside, outside, if that makes sense. And you can, you can merge two elements of a scene by using that characteristic. Okay. After that, you can think about dimensionality, uh, which means not just photographing dead on, on a flat plane. You know, you can go for a bit of an angle. You can stack the scene, you know, you can have kind of a window sandwich in between different elements. Um, you know, you can play with, the, play with the horizon line. It doesn't need to be a frame in a frame directly dead on. You know, you can tilt things, you can make it a little bit more abstract. Um, you know, you can do things like opening the window, uh, which makes it a more dynamic scene. You know, that gives you even more depth you know, within your own space. Um, in terms of... Uh, photographic interpretations. Windows offer a lot in terms of light. Um, windows are, are most generally during the day a, a source of great natural light. You can play with it as using that as your only light source. Uh, you can change you know, the lights you've got inside, see what effects, see what reflections that creates, for example. Um, alternatively, you can meet up the shadows and leave the window blown out. Um, this gives a little bit more of an uh, ethereal effect. You, know, you, you can have more detail, more character on the inside and then nothing on the outside. Um, personally, I'd go for spot metering, which means that you're just exposing for the light or just exposing for the shadow one thing at a time. And then if you've got live view on your camera, play around with the settings, you know, tweak and see what balance you can create with those two extremes. Okay, I think that does cover a lot. Uh, it's up to you to experiment and you know, try and see your familiar space in a way that's entirely new. Um, I've kept these ideas for the presentation mostly around the house. If anyone's safely out and about, you know, uh, legally driving or photographing any other kind of window we haven't discussed, that's superb, but obviously stay safe. Um, when it comes to submitting the images to review, please limit them to three per person. Um, I'd suggest not three of the best examples, just three examples that you'd want to be spoken about, maybe three failures. Um, three things where you really tried something new, but things that are worth talking about. Um, and hopefully we'll have time tomorrow to discuss as many of those as possible. Um, and if you do that by the criteria on the screen, so we've got the email address listed. Um, if you put your name on the files so that we can associate them with you. And if you want to share them on Instagram, you can use these hashtags. And I think that's a good way to keep this going for a longer term than 24 hours, because if you're sharing them as a community uh, on Instagram, you can offer each other feedback and support as well. Um, it means that if we don't have time to cover lots of work tomorrow, 
then there'll still be a way for you to get feedback on your work by sharing it with the community. Um, the link for the review session tomorrow is going to be different to the one today. I think Robin's going to share it with us. Is that right, Robin? That's correct. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to share it now, actually, in the chat Wonderful. box. Thank you. I hope that wasn't too passive aggressive. <laughs> um, and then the next slide is going to be a Q&A session, and I'll, I'll go through and see if any of you have used that function. And the slide after that is going to be a list of the photographers featured throughout this presentation. And let me have a look at the Q&A. There are no questions asked so far. So if everyone wants to have a think and ask any questions now, that would be great. Sorry. Thank you, Robin, for sharing the link. Yeah, so that the link that I just shared is the one to join for tomorrow's um, review, um, gentle critique, what do we call it? Wonderful. Um, uh, Vincent, no, you can use any camera you have access to. Um, or phone, or anything. <laughs> anything whatsoever. Uh, pinhole. Pinhole, that might take a little bit longer than 24 hours, but you know what, Let's take that challenge. Robin, you've got to shoot a pinhole window <laughs> Oh my word. You've got to do it. Um, what draws me to black and white more so than color? I think that's a very, that would be a long question for me to answer. I think that color, if a photograph is describing something that I've seen, when I describe something to someone using words, the color isn't normally the first thing that comes to my mind when I'm talking about it. If I'm describing something that's happened in my life, I'm not describing the colors, I'm describing the event, and black and white gives me the event and no other distractions. Um, Adam, how do you create depth in a fast paced environment on the street? I would say to use a much wider lens, I would say to stop down, and I would say to search for layers in sequence. So usually whatever's furthest away from you is moving the slowest, whatever's closest to you is moving the fastest. So find your background first and then position yourself so that things are going to come into play in front of you and you know, you'll know you know when things are in the right place. It'll fall together hopefully like a jigsaw puzzle in your mind and um, that's, that, that's how I tend to work fastest uh, to create depth. Great. Any other questions? Um, that was done. Just checking the chat box here. Yeah, so 2 p.m. Yes, that is UK time. Um, yeah, link again. Let me just share it in case it's getting lost in the in the feed. So it's about about an hour, probably tomorrow. Sure. Yeah, two till three. Um, and as if you can just show that last slide that you had. Um, there we go. So yeah, if you can make sure you email those images um, by 11 a.m. Um, at the latest tomorrow, um, just obviously so um, Simon has time to look through, through those images prior to starting at 2 p.m. Um, and yeah, just JPEGs, please. Don't, don't, uh, don't try and send me any raw files or, or TIFF files. <laughs> Might be a, a, bit, a bit of a headache to try and then send them on to Simon. Uh, we've had another question come through from Adam. How do you create a concise body of work? And is this something you aim for before you start shooting a project or does this come naturally from curation? Uh, to me, concise work comes afterwards. When it comes to actually shooting a project, you just shoot. You don't worry about concise. And then afterwards, when I'm looking at my work, I'm trying to think cinematically in terms of wide shot, mid shot, close shot, as in set the scene, introduce the character, have that character doing something interesting. and then maybe include a fourth image of like something magic that I didn't know I was expecting. And then in those four images, that'll be as concise as possible. Uh, but it should also tell as full of a story based around that one thing as possible. Uh, I don't know that four images is always enough, but it's what I try and always have minimum. And then I can fill out, you know, pad out the rest of the space if I want it to be less concise. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. There's a couple of questions just popped up in the chat box. Um, repeat the wording of the assignment. That's on the, the other slide, I think. Sure. Um, um, are we using new images or can they be taken you know, previously? Uh, new images, please. Uh, produce something new. Um, otherwise, 
it's not an assignment it's just a, a scavenger hunt um, that's, that's part of the challenge yeah uh, repeat the wording of the assignment it's to photograph using you know what uh, it's through my window so it's to photograph using what a window offers in an image um, Vincent is the idea to look at our submitted images as a set versus individual images I think individual images makes the most sense I don't think it's about telling a photo story yet but if that's something you want to work towards long term then when you share those images um, publicly present them as a set as a slideshow and ask that they be assessed as such um, any more questions I'm just looking at raised hands Stephen I think Michael I think that was your question so I think I can unraise that one oh Ago hello Ago um, Ago, have you got something to, to add? Can we, well, we haven't really tried that function. Hello, Hello. Ago. Hello, Robin, how are you doing? I'm very good. <laughs> very good. Ciao, Simon, good to meet you. Thank you good for, to meet uh, you too. thank you for your time. It's very insightful. All, uh, all you said in a very, very short time. I've had a lot of coffee. Good, 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 good. And uh, I have a question which is um, a, a more uh, general, um, general question, um, somehow related to today topics as well. When I go out shooting, uh, I probably don't have always the, the fixed theme in my mind that I want to capture. Um, because I travel a lot, so I try to catch a little bit whatever I see, whatever uh, stay in my mind and my emotion. But then when I go back home, I find a lot of images with uh, perhaps different style, different angle, different subject, and uh, can be uh, confusing when I want to search for a particular image related to a theme. Um, does it make sense? It makes sense, but I think it depends on what your priority is. Because if you if you want to produce things thematically for yourself, that's one thing. But if you're doing this to to please others, mm -hmm. um, then it makes less sense. I think okay. regardless of what you're shooting, it's you shooting it. So all the images will make sense because you've shot them. There's no objective style or theme or substance that we can achieve. Mm -hmm. um, it'll always just be what you're producing. And I think looking at one trip one trip at a time you know, can be very diverse just because you're, you're going to lots of different places. But if you look back mm -hmm. in maybe five, 10 years at a massive body of work, things will jump out at you and you'll realize that you've been shooting to a theme without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that's because you're, you're, you're always going to be drawn to certain things over other things. That's just mm -hmm. natural, you know, whether, whether you're aware of that in the moment or not. Mm -hmm but you can only really know about it when you've lost the association to that images. So when I, when I've just traveled somewhere, when I've just finished some big project, I would, I know it's healthier to sit on those images for as long as possible and not look at them because whatever excitement or joy or anticipation I have for those images, I think I've got something good. I know I've got something good. And I see that image and I think, yes, I've got it. I look back in a few months and I think I didn't get it. You know, this isn't mm -hmm. it, but it's mm -hmm. something else. And it's because that initial excitement of having just made this piece of work, that's what I'm responding to, not the actual quality of the work itself. That's what should matter long-term. That's what other people will pick up on rather than your own association with that image. I hope that helps. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank well. you, Robbie. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Great. Philip. Um, yeah, Philip. Ask a question. Uh, do you often talk to your subjects you take photos of and what are your thoughts on the ethics of doing so? Um, that's always going to be a case by case basis. I think there's more communication that I do without talking. Uh, even though I'm not the friendliest person, I'm still able to go into a space and read people's emotions. You know, I can tell whether or not I'm welcome or whether I'm about to get punched. Um, and sometimes, you know, a smile, a tip of my hat, a kind of, you know, you can gesture with the camera. It's a very friendly camera that I use. Uh, currently, all my work shot on the M6, um, which isn't a, a paparazzi machine by any means. You know, it's a, it's a nice, friendly, approachable device. And, you know, I, I give them a smile and a nod and 
it's usually if I'm taking someone's photo, it's because they're doing something interesting, not because they look interesting. And if someone's doing something fun or interesting and they're having a good time and someone enters that space and they don't interfere with that, and you know, I have a bit of a laugh with them, you can, you can, you know, that, that that's kind of implicit permission, but it's not a matter of saying stand there, do this, because that would be unethical for the kind of work that I do. But if that's the kind of work you want to do, obviously do it, but be honest about it. I think that, I hope that helps. Perfect, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna see if Corey has, um, would like to add something. Maybe let's have a look. Corey, I've just given you the the option to talk if you'd like. Otherwise, you may have raised your hand accidentally, so no, no problem if if that's the case. Um, there's a comment there. Great, thank you. Stand up with me. Oh, good. <laughs> Somebody was joining from Ibiza. Grateful of the webinars. That's great to hear. Thank you. Okay, so I think that looks like everything. Last last chance to ask any questions. Let's see if anything comes in. That's right. If anyone's typing, they can put their hand up, and uh, if not, then we can we can bring things to a close. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hang on. Will you guys submit images? Um, no. I won't be uh, because I'm shooting film, oh. so it'll take me a while. Um, <laughs> uh, I, would, I would like to participate. I am also shooting from home, but unfortunately, I'm also working at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, probably but, not tomorrow. Yeah, not tomorrow, but over time, um, if you check back in with those hashtags, I'll probably have produced something at some point. Um, Philip, do the photos have to be shot as a series? No, they don't. Um, just images. Don't worry about cohesion. Um, just, just think about each image as it comes. Uh, there's a question from when in the chat. Usual camera setting. Um, so the M6 is a fully manual camera. Uh, I don't know that there are settings. Um, in terms of the way I think of it, it's probably closest to aperture priority in that I try and have my shutter speed as close to freezing motion as possible unless I want to do panning or long exposure. And I set my aperture up based on whatever light is available to me, but I err on the side of closer to wide open than to stop down just for convenience of gathering more light to hit my film. Because I'd rather have an overexposed frame of film than underexposed. Um, do I print my own? I have done in the past, but not recently because I'm focusing on shooting. Which lab do I use? There are a few in London. Um, off the top of my head, I would say that the, the London Darkroom, which is based in Camden, is pretty decent. Favorite black and white film? That's a trick question. Um, but I'm going to say Delta 400. Don't at me. <laughs> um, doesn't matter with subject content, people versus no people. Whatever you have access to, um, honestly, whatever you feel comfortable with shooting, whatever you feel is going to be something that you wouldn't normally do. I think that um, if you tend to shoot people, try and shoot some still life. If you tend to shoot still life, see if you've got access to, you know, a person in your house, a cat, any subject. Um, although cats are some of the, you know, most troublesome models to work with. So it's, it's difficult getting them to do what you want. Um, Corey Salmon missed the first few minutes. Robin, is that going to be, will we have, will this be up for people to watch? Um, yes. Um, also, I mean, I guess it might be easier if, yeah, I mean, the link I should actually get shortly after this webinar ends. I think I just get an automatic download. Um, so Corey Salmon, I'll just make a note of your name so that I can get your email details. So yeah, I can, I can share that link with you. Wonderful. Thank you. And when, how much extra work do you do to a print a photo after shooting? Um, as much work as it needs. I'm not a big fan of heavy uh, masking and dodging and burning just because I'm very bad at it. Um, 
So I try and base things around not doing as much work as possible. I try and get my exposure right for the for the uh, for wherever I've exposed for the most detail, which is normally in the shadows. And then I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm happy to lose the highlights uh, in a scan or a print. Um, were there a couple of other questions in the Q&A? Um, which one did you just yeah. answered Steve's question, didn't you? That was, no, that was no. Um, in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Um, Adam, what will you shoot first once we're allowed to leave our houses? That's <laughs> no. Um, I'll probably shoot my commute. I'll probably have a, a nice bus ride, or uh, I don't normally take the train, but I'll, I'll, I'll maybe, as a treat, treat myself to a train ride and photograph that. Um, I'll find the nearest crowd and just get in there and be around people. I think that'll be um, the healthiest thing to shoot, just to get back into uh, masses of people, because that's one of my favourite environments to shoot in, and it's now illegal. <laughs> um, why am I using film? Because film there are lots of ways that I can answer that question. I think I've done a lot of writing in the past that does answer that question. I think the, the easiest thing to say is just I enjoy it. Um, it, it doesn't take any more justification than if you have fun with a medium, use it. Uh, any other answer would take far too long for me to get into here. Um, but if you Google my name and film photography, you'll get a list of articles that I've written um, and you can bore yourself to death with those. Uh, can you explain how to spot meter on an M camera? Uh, spot metering depends on the meter that you're using. In M cameras, it's a center, center weighted meter almost always. Um, when it's a film camera and the classic setting on digital cameras is also accentuated. Uh, personally, I'm not metering for an average of a scene. I'll either be exposing for the highlights or for the shadows. I don't do mid grounds. Either the detail I'm photographing is dark or it's light. It's not usually in between. So when I'm metering, I'm just pointing the camera at whatever the extreme is and reading the metering off that. Uh, there are some great apps you can get on your phone, regardless of whether it's iPhone or Android or otherwise. Um, and you can use that as a spot meter if you absolutely must. But that's how I would go about it. If you have a digital M camera, then it's a better use of your time if you slow down and use the manual settings and just see what each setting is changing about your image. And then make your exposure based on whatever looks right to your eye, not based on whatever the meter is telling you. Perfect. Um, and just in case, did you um, answer the question from Andrew um, with regards to does it matter um, whether they're shooting people or, or no people? I did, yeah. You did. Good, good. Um, you can, as you can see, I'm not very good at multitasking. I can't listen and write at the same time. That's right. You should be a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's all the questions. Yep. Wonderful. Great. All right. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, the, um, good luck, guys. Next, hold on. The next slide is the uh, is the list of photographers featured. Just so, if anyone's interested in, in some of the work I showed, and if they want to look at them for inspiration, um, take a screenshot of this one, or it'll be available later on by the uh, link in the recording. Um, some of these artists I chose specifically because they take amazing photos featuring windows. Others take amazing photos otherwise, but they happen to have some great examples of photos using Windows. Uh, I'm not looking for people to copy their work, just to see what they're offering, to see what they've seen, and see if that you know jump starts anything for yourselves. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoy the assignment, and I'll see those of you who want to do the review session tomorrow. Um, and maybe I should just one more time add that link for tomorrow in the chat feed, which you can see there. Um, so yeah, make sure you um, take note of that link or copy and paste it onto a document, I suppose. Um, and yeah, good luck. Good luck with the assignment. We'll see you tomorrow. And the awkward ending, here we go.